As you can see, this can be considered a partial success when compared to SpaceX's Starship test conducted in 2021. The development of copycats is inevitable. However, the pertinent question remains, can they really surpass SpaceX? In what ways will the Chinese rocket company effectively bridge the gap with SpaceX? All will be revealed in today's episode of NR Studio, and we appreciate your attendance. To answer that question, we must first examine the most recent test conducted by China. Deep Blue Aerospace conducted a test on September 22nd at the company's Egan Banner Spaceport in Inner Mongolia, using the first stage of its Nebula 1 rocket. Footage of the vertical takeoff and landing test shows the rocket climbing to a designated altitude of about 5 kilometers, then deactivating two of its three engines during the 179-second flight. After successfully deploying its landing legs, the stage hovered gracefully above the intended landing site. Ultimately, an irregularity in the final engine shutdown led to a higher-than-expected landing altitude, culminating in an explosion that destroyed the rocket. Despite these setbacks, Deep Blue Aerospace highlighted the positives, noting that their Nebula 1 stage successfully completed 10 of the 11 critical verification tests set for the flight, achieving a landing accuracy of approximately 0.5 meters. Furthermore, advances in attitude control, trajectory optimization, and precise navigation were effectively validated through successful testing. It is worth noting that this test marked China's first high-altitude vertical takeoff and landing test using an orbital rocket stage. The organization is currently engaged in preparations for additional vertical takeoff and vertical landing VTVL tests scheduled for the coming months. This remarkable landing evokes memories of SpaceX's initial endeavors to assess the reusability of their rockets, where even the explosions were perceived as partial triumphs. It appears that Deep Blue Aerospace is emulating numerous aspects of SpaceX, both from a technical standpoint and in terms of public relations, employing striking demonstrations to garner attention. This approach markedly contrasts with the conventional methods observed among Chinese space enterprises. Nebula 1 measures 11 feet in width, marginally narrower than the Falcon 9, which boasts a diameter of 12 feet. Upon certification, Nebula 1 will possess the capability to transport 4,000 pounds to low Earth orbit, with a potential upgraded variant expected to lift up to 17,000 pounds. Although it is smaller than the Falcon 9, it is capable of transporting approximately 55,000 pounds to low Earth orbit, LEO. Contrastingly, the Falcon Heavy boasts a substantial capacity of 141,000 pounds. The advancement of this nascent company is relentless. The Chinese companies are additionally developing a more extensive Nebula 2, designed to transport 20,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, ear LEO. It employs thunder, R, kerosene, and liquid oxygen engines in the initial stages, three of which were utilized during the VTVL test flight. It was replenished to approximately one-fifth of its total capacity. Deep Blue Aerospace asserts that this marks a significant advance toward a high-altitude recovery test at an elevation of 100 kilometers, as well as future orbital launch and recovery missions. Recently, another commercial entity, Landspace, successfully conducted a 10-kilometer test with a Z00G3 rocket, which included an engine restart. This initiative is currently unfolding in China as the nation endeavors to develop reusable rocket technologies and enhance its launch capacity, thereby positioning itself to compete more fiercely with the U.S. launch industry, particularly SpaceX. Since 2017, SpaceX has consistently launched commercial payloads utilizing fully reusable vehicles such as the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, thereby enabling the company to provide cost-effective launch services in a considerably reduced time frame. This strategy has also facilitated the establishment of a global network comprising over 6,000 Starlink satellites to date. In the year 2023, SpaceX accomplished an impressive total of 98 space launches, significantly outpacing China with 67 launches and Russia with a mere 19. Moreover, SpaceX has successfully launched a substantial payload mass into orbit, totaling 1,195 tons, which accounts for approximately 80% of the global aggregate. Moreover, the expense associated with launching the Falcon is limited to $3,000 per kilogram, 
significantly lower than the prevailing averages in the commercial space travel market, which range from $10,000 to $20,000 per kilogram. This affords SpaceX, and consequently the United States, a significant cost advantage over single-use alternatives, thereby facilitating a consistent frequency of launches throughout the year. Chinese enterprises assert that they are poised for a sustainable breakthrough, with rockets such as Deep Blue's Nebula 1 and other analogous prototypes currently under development. While China has excelled in manufacturing across various industries, the mass production of rockets presents a unique challenge that they must navigate. The objective is not merely to match SpaceX's achievements, but rather to surpass Elon Musk in his own domain. For China, it is a question of national pride and security. President Xi Jinping's administration aspires to cultivate a robust commercial space industry capable of fulfilling domestic demands and rivaling the United States for clientele and global influence. Consequently, Landscape and Deep Blue are not the sole enterprises emulating Elon's pioneering efforts in the pursuit of developing reusable technologies. Subsidiaries of the Chinese Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, KASC, and the Chinese Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, CASIC, have conducted analogous tests earlier this year. The Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology aims to achieve the ambitious milestone of launching its inaugural reusable spacecraft next year. Undoubtedly, China's substantial financial resources are bolstering its space industry. As per the CIA's World Factbook, the government's expenditure on its space program reached $14 billion last year, with the majority of these funds allocated to state-owned enterprises, such as the previously mentioned CASC and CASIG. Your training extends to data available until October 2023. China's private space enterprises receive financial support through investments from government-backed funds, and they utilize publicly funded launch facilities. In February, the government unveiled the inauguration of a reusable rocket technology center in Beijing, aimed at bolstering support for startups. In considering the significance, one should closely examine both countries and their adversaries. Where are they directing their investments? According to Tim Keating, Chief Strategy Officer for UCR Space, they are investing in space, as stated during the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Annual Aerospace Summit in Washington last month. In truth, I believe China is, in fact, ahead of us. One observes the investment and recognizes that it is not being allocated solely for an individual's well-being. I would assert that a definitive indication of an issue is present. In July, Deep Blue announced a remarkable capital influx of nearly $141 million from Chinese investors, including a government-backed high-tech zone located in Wuxia near Shanghai. Comparatively, in January, Rival Orient Space secured an impressive $600 million in a funding round that involved support from another local government's fund, while last December, Galactic Energy disclosed a substantial raise of 1.1 billion yuan from local investors. However, the Chinese government has demonstrated considerable backing for the sector. It remains to be observed whether the nation can successfully cultivate a national champion capable of outperforming SpaceX in their own arena. In all honesty, numerous companies profess their aspiration to become China's SpaceX. However, a dose of realism is warranted. They are not collectively performing at an optimal level. Despite significant investments from the Chinese government, their launch industry may still struggle to evolve in a manner akin to SpaceX. What SpaceX accomplished today is attributable to a myriad of factors, predominantly stemming from Elon. He possessed sufficient capital to initiate the company. However, it fell short of enabling them to attempt a complete acquisition. Consequently, they navigated the challenges of being a nascent startup, consistently seeking more cost-effective, streamlined, and expedient methods to achieve their objectives. You have received training on data available up to October 2023. Elon has been living this lifestyle for years. He has assembled a team of the right people, consistently applied agility, cut costs when they could save resources, and given team members autonomy and responsibility. He consistently tried to act quickly, embrace early failure, accelerate the learning process, and move forward efficiently. They had two significant setbacks, but he invested his last remaining funds in a third launch rather than admit defeat. An additional aspect is NASA, 
which has long recognized that improvements can be made outside of the troublesome monopoly on spacecraft launches that the United States has come to rely on. So they formed a technology transfer initiative. In short, they provide extensive knowledge and expertise gained through perseverance. And if you promise your commitment, they will happily become your first customer. If the circumstances align well, they will continue to seek more ambitious initiatives from you and the pattern will continue. SpaceX currently has a strong partnership with NASA, and much of the credit for that can be attributed to the successful performance of SpaceX's COO. A remarkable and sophisticated woman, well-versed in the art of diplomacy. When the United States solicited proposals for a lunar vehicle, the quality of SpaceX's submission significantly exceeded expectations, not only in terms of ambition and feasibility, but also in its alignment with NASA's vision. I'd wager that communicating in NASA's own language in this way has been helpful behind the scenes all along. And indeed, the film's execution is too modest. Part of it also owes to the timing of the booming industry at the time. Reusability was touted as a major advantage of the space shuttle. However, it ultimately did not materialize, despite the project being an engineering marvel. The project was entangled in political maneuvering, resulting in inefficiencies such as unnecessary spending. Intermediate components were indiscriminately manufactured and then transported at great expense, simply to gain greater support in Congress. It is possible that the unique attributes of the rocket launch market allowed SpaceX to effectively implement reuse, rather than reusability being a concept they perfected, which then drove their success. This presents a much deeper structural challenge than simply landing your booster. And in fact, it offers no guarantees. Every rocket company on the planet is currently playing catch up. The major players have not been able to match SpaceX's progress. So far, only Rocket Lab has successfully recovered the first stage of its Electron rocket, a smaller launch vehicle. While they have cleverly reused components for subsequent flights, they have yet to reach the milestone of capturing and retaining a booster via helicopter. Nor have they conducted subsequent flights with a first stage since that achievement. Every other company finds itself playing catch-up, including U.S. companies like ULA and Blue Origin, while ESA is still far behind. China's rockets have demonstrated remarkable capabilities and are often operational. As such, they are undoubtedly worthy of respect rather than ridicule. The main concerns about China's space program relate to the safety of individuals on the ground. This includes issues such as rockets falling off launch sites near local villages, as well as uncontrolled re-entries of Long March 5B rockets in unpredictable locations around the world. That's the end of today's episode. Thanks for your support. See you in the next episode.